What's up everyone, I'm Nick. This is Swiftful Thinking and I'm getting excited because as we're progressing in the Swift UI Bootcamp, we can now start getting into some of the really cool, really exciting things that we can do in Swift UI. And one of the coolest property wrappers that we haven't touched on until this video is called App Storage. So if you are an iOS developer coming from UIKit, you've probably heard of user defaults. And App Storage is just the Swift UI version of user defaults. And it's essentially the same thing, but a little bit easier to use. So in this video, we're gonna actually use user defaults and then use App Storage so you guys can see the subtle difference between the two and how cool App Storage really is. And for those of you who have never heard of user defaults, never heard of App Storage, well, you can think of this as basically a little mini database that's in the iPhone where you can save information so that if the user closes your app and then reopens your app, that information is still saved. So this is perfect for situations when you have small pieces of data, like your current user's name, your current user's ID, or maybe the last time the user signed in or whether or not they are premium. But generally, this is not the place where you wanna store a whole database. I think a lot of beginner developers think, oh, this is perfect, I'm gonna save all my information there but really this is just for small pieces of data. So with that said, this should be a fairly easy video, but I'm gonna take a couple extra minutes in the video to really just explain to you what is going on because a lot of it is behind the scenes. And again, app storage is super important. If you're using an app where you need to save a user's data, whether or not they're signed in, signed out, you're gonna to have to use app storage. So. All right, everyone, I am back in Xcode, of course. Let's right-click the navigator, create a new file. It's gonna be a Swift UI view, and let's call this one App Storage Bootcamp. Go ahead and click Create. Once you're inside, click Resume on the canvas. Let's get ready to get coding. So let's get rid of this text hello world. Let's add a V stack to our screen. Let's give it some spacing of maybe 20, and we'll open the brackets. At the top of the VStack, I'm gonna have a text, and for right now, I'm just gonna put my name, Nick, and underneath that text, we're gonna have a button. And the button, very simply, let's open the parentheses. Let's use the title string protocol approach. This title will just do save, and I'm gonna make it dot uppercased after the end of the string, I'll call dot uppercase. And then for the action, I'm gonna hit enter and we're just gonna leave it blank for now. We're not actually gonna do anything with the save button just yet. So the title, the text says Nick, but let's make that a variable. So we've done this a bunch of times in the course. At the top, we'll do at state var and let's call it current user name. It will be of type string and let's make it an optional string. So there's a chance that we don't know the current user's name and if it's not set, this will be equal to nil. But if it is set, it will be a string. So let's put that current username in this text. Current username. And we're gonna run into a quick error. And this error is because this current username is optional. And to have some text into this text object, we need to make sure that we do have a value. So if you're following other online courses and they're telling you to explicitly unwrap, so if you click this and you click this force unwrap using exclamation point, if you're seeing this in other courses, I would advise you to get another course because this explicit unwrap is very dangerous because what you're telling Xcode when you have this explicit unwrap, you're saying that although this variable is optional and there's a chance that it is nil, we are 100% positive that right now it has a value. That's what this exclamation point means. And as we know, there is no value right now. So if we ran this code with this exclamation point, it's going to crash. So there are two safe ways to unwrap this optional into a text. And the first one, if we delete this and we click on that fix again, it's giving us this other option with the coalesce using double question marks. And if I click that fix, we can add two question marks and then give it a value if this is nil. So this text is gonna have whatever this value is if there is no value in current username. So right now let's put add name here. So if there is no current username, it'll say add name here. And if we click resume on the canvas, it should say add name here right now. Beautiful. 
The other safe way of unwrapping this, which I showed you a couple of videos ago, is by using an if let statement. And I'm just going over this because this is good practice. So we could say if let name equals current username, open brackets, and then we will add a text with name. So if we can create this name variable with a value, we'll add the text to the screen. As we can see, if we click resume on the canvas here, this is not being created because right now there is no current username. Whereas in this version, this text is always going to be on the screen, but if there is no name, we're going to have a basically a placeholder, a default string in that text. So again, these are the two safe ways to optionally unwrap in Swift UI and Swift in general. And what we're getting at in this video is persistence. So when we click this save button, I want to update the current username with my name. So in the action for this save, I'm going to call current username and I'm going to set it equal to Nick. So I actually want to start testing this on a simulator and not just this preview device. So what we're going to do, I'm going to open up that project navigator on the left side where we show or hide the navigator. And I'm going to go up to the Swiftful Thinking Bootcamp app dot Swift. This is going to be whatever you name this project app dot Swift file. And we did this way back in the first video of this course. And I'm basically going to take this current view app storage bootcamp and make sure this is the first view when we run our app. So this app storage bootcamp, remember the name, I'm going to go into that Swiftful Thinking bootcamp dot app dot Swift file. And you'll know if you're in the right file because it will have your at main call and it will have the window. And then this is the first screen in our app. So the first screen I want to be the app storage bootcamp screen. That's the screen that we just made. So if I run my device on the simulator, this will be the first screen. And now I'm going to go back by pressing this back button back into the file that we just had. I want to run this app now on our simulator, so not on the preview here. So we're going to do that by clicking the play button here at the top. It's the run button and it's going to run our app Swiftful Thinking Bootcamp on an iPhone 12. And if you want to change the device, you can change your device here. But uh, let's do an iPhone for now. So iPhone 12 is good. And let's click run. And it should create a it should pop up a simulator somewhere on your computer. So I'm going to hide uh, the canvas right now because we're not using the canvas. I'm going to hide this navigation bar as well and show you guys the rest of my screen here. Let's make this bigger. And let's look at the app. So our app ran and this says add name here as we know because it's this text field. And when I click save, we should add current user name. And it's going to update this variable. So when this gets updated, we should see the name Nick and we should see it twice because now we can see the second text field as well. So I'll click save and now we see Nick twice. This is great. This is perfect. This is what we've learned so far in this course. And let's pretend like the user was in our app. They added their name. They clicked save and now they close the app. So I'm going to close the app on my iPhone. And if I open up the app one more time now, you're going to see that the name did not actually save between sessions. It did not persist between app sessions. So when I close the app, it defaulted back to the starting state. And this is where app storage comes in. With app storage, we can save small pieces of data, such as the user's name, the user's ID, uh, into our app so that it saves and persists between sessions. So I'm going to first show you guys how to do this using user defaults because it's important that you understand user defaults before you understand app storage. And if you learned iOS development on UI kit, you are already aware and probably an expert with user defaults, but let's check it out here. So when I click save, let's create a variable to hold the word Nick. So say let uh, name equals Nick. And we can update the current user's name by calling by adding name here, which is just this variable. And then I want to save this name into my user defaults. So let's call user defaults dot standard dot set. And then we can you can see here that there are a bunch of different types that we can set. We can set integers, doubles, booleans. 
We're just going to use the any here because we're going to set a string. So let's press enter and then it's asking for a value. What value do we want to set or save? Well, the value is going to be Nick, of course. So we'll say name and then for key. And this is basically just the key that we're going to save this under. So the key I'm going to use is name. And the key is important because it's going to save this name underneath the key. So if we want to fetch this key later, if we want to fetch this data, we're going to need to know what key to look for. So right now the key is just called name. And by this one simple line of code, we are saving our name into the user defaults. And you can just think of the user defaults as a variable or like a dictionary that is behind the scenes. And our entire app is going to have access to this user defaults. So when we click save, we're now saving our name to the user defaults for the key name. But if we close our app and then we open it up again, we then want to pull that information back from user defaults and set it into our current user's name. On this V stack, when it appears, I'm going to call dot on appear, open the brackets. And when the screen appears, we're going to now get the value from user defaults. So we'll say current username, this variable up here, and we're going to set it equal to user defaults dot standard dot string for key because we know we're saving a string, right? This is a type string. I'll even add type string here just to be sure. And we're going to pull the string for key. Now be aware here, we need to tell it exactly what key, where is this saved under? And we know it's saved under the key name. So here we'll add name. So when we click save, we're going to save it to user defaults. And when we reopen our app, when it appears, it's then going to look for some value that's saved under this word name and then add that to our current user name. So let's check this out quick. Click run on the simulator here. It'll build up our app again. Add name here. Obviously, we don't have a current user name yet. So let's click save. And then now when we click save, it should have updated our current user name, but also updated the user defaults. So if we reload our app now, let's close our app, open it back up. And when it's on a peer, it's going to then load the value from user defaults. So you can see here now it's saved between sessions. We have our current user's name between both sessions. So we close our app, we open our app, we still have the user's name. And we can do this for all different types of values as you saw. Right now we're just using a string with the user's name, but we could do Booleans, we could do integers, whatever small pieces of data you want to save in your app, you can put them in user defaults. Now, I wanted to show you user defaults because this is the underlying logic behind app storage. This is what we've been using in iOS development for years. Before SwiftUI came out, you used user defaults. But with SwiftUI, there is a new property wrapper that we can use, and it is called app storage. So let's create a new variable here. We're going to do at app storage. And when we open the parentheses on app storage, it's going to ask us for a key. Now we've seen this word key before we saw it down here and we're going to use this same key for this variable up here. So we'll do quote name and we're going to make this a variable and we're going to call it current user name, just like we did above. And of course this will be of type optional string because if this was the first time our user was using this app, there would be no value in this app storage in this key. So now that we're using this app storage version, we no longer need this. So I'm going to delete this at state current username entirely. So this is now our current user name. And the cool thing about app storage is we no longer need to set variables into user defaults. We no longer need to fetch variables from user defaults. By changing this variable directly, it will save. So if we change this to a new name, it's automatically going to do this line of code and set. If we reopen our app, it's automatically going to pull the name from the key. So we don't have to actually have this on a peer at all. So what I'm actually going to do now is delete this on a peer. I'm going to delete this user defaults. 
And just for example purposes, let's change the name. So here I'm gonna put maybe uh, Emily. And I'm gonna click resume or click play on the simulator again. And the first time it loads, you're gonna see that it's gonna say Nick still. And that's because it's saved, it pulled from the app storage what we had previously. But now when we click save, all we need to do is update this variable because this variable is automatically tied to the app storage key of name. So all we're gonna do is current username, we're gonna update the current username to Emily. Click save, it's Emily, it's updating on our view. I can close my app, I can open my app, and it still says Emily. So you should now realize how easy and powerful app storage makes our lives because we don't need to deal with setting, saving to user defaults. So we can just update this variable directly and it's updated on our app. And the best part is that this line of code I could then put on any view in my app and they will all have access to that same variable. So if I saved it here and I had a different screen on my app, but I added this variable on the top of that screen, I could still access that current user's name, which is awesome. All right guys, so that was it for this video. I originally planned to do a bunch more in this video, but this is getting long and what I wanna do is gonna be a little complex. So I'm gonna make a whole new video next where we really dive into how powerful and how cool app storage is. So in this one, I hope you got a really brief understanding on how to use app storage. We looked at user default, which is the underlying technology of app storage. And in the next video, we're just going to put on display some of the skills that we've learned so far in this course and really see the power of app storage. Don't forget to hit subscribe if you're enjoying this content. Uh, as always, I'm Nick, this is Swiftful Thinking, and I'll see you in the next video.